Salam and good day, I bid to my supervisor, Dr. Bawadi, and my internal and external examiner, Dr. Monir Zaman, and Dr. Mohd Fitri. My name is Mama Afiq Ishra bin Isa, a final year final semester chemical engineering student. So today I'm going to present about my final year project 2, FRP2, with the title of Production of Syngas by Bioreforming of Methane using Calcium Oxide Nickel Alumina Catalyst. So for the outline, I'm going to explain about the introduction, literature review, methodology, results and discussion, conclusions, recommendations, and last but not least, references. So I'll proceed with the introduction of the presentation. So basically, the demand of energy has increased exponentially every year, which is a major contributor to climate change and also global warming. And this extreme consumption of fossil fuel has resulted to huge amount of carbon dioxide, CO2 released to the environment, which is a not good thing to our Earth. So in recent years, researchers have developed innovative and economical technologies to generate synthesis gas, which also known as gas from CO2, uh, and the conventional way to producing gas uh, known as steam reforming and also dry reforming. And recently, they have developed a new method to produce uh, the syngas uh, from CO2, uh, which is by reforming of methane, which is the combination of steam reforming and also dry reforming. And this is the equation of the by reforming of methane. And for the problem statement, the by reforming of methane is not yet um, suitable to be used for scale up processes due to unavailability of the step of a stable catalyst, the reduction of active site of nickel metal during the process, during the reaction, the formation of carbon, which is carbonization and active metal sintering, which will lead to the catalyst deactivation. So there are two objectives uh, for this project. So the first one is to synthesize a stable and dynamic nickel-based catalyst by incorporating mainly calcium oxide and alumina. And the second one is to conduct suitable catalyzation and catalytic testing toward the prepared nickel-based catalyst. And for the scope of work, uh, I've synthesized nickel-based catalyst with constant weight percent of uh, nickel, which is 500%, and uh, this thing with percent of calcium oxide, which is 2 and 4 weight percent, uh, by using wetness impregnation method. So for the characterization, I've employed two characterization to uh, examine the properties of the catalyst, which is SRD, SRD fraction, and also BET, and to check the stability of the catalyst towards uh, the purpose of this project, which is bioreforming of methane. I've employed uh, the catalyst into the reaction using tubular flow reactor. So next is literature review. So basically, uh, the last two methods, which is steam and dry forming, will produce ratio of H2 over CO of 1 to 1. So it is different with bioreforming of methane, where it produces the ratio of H2 over CO is 2 to 1, which is uh, better than the other two methods. So basically, th this ratio can be adjusted by altering the water over water plus carbon dioxide ratio to meet the requirement or directly coupled to the downstream industrial processes and this can also address the problem of carbon formation and for the catalyst for bioreforming uh, previously catalyst, um, researcher has utilized carbon carbon based catalyst for the reaction and it deactivated quickly due to the oxidation of active sites by CO2 and choke formation and the next one is catalyst based on noble metal where it is more active and less sensitive to the choke formation but it is high cost for scale of processes so this is the bioreforming reactions and mechanism where it consists of four parts which is the first one is CH4 activation H2O and CO2 decomposition reaction of allosbasis and last but not least CO and H2 production so this is the example of catalyst and the reaction for bioreforming of methane. So the first one is nickel with 10% and supported alumina and this is the promoter. Uh, so basically for the conversion is around 65 until 69% and there is no conversion of CO2 at all. And the next one is 14% of nickel with supported alumina and this is the supporter and the closest to us is CA. And from here we can see the conversion is 83.6 for methane and also 90% for, uh, for CO2 and the last one is nickel 5% which is the same like us 5% and it uses alpha alumina and the promoter uh, one of one of the promoter is the same which is calcium oxide and the uh, conversion is around 66% for methane and also 81% for CO2 so from here we can um, expect the results of the conversion for our catalyst later on 
so for the methodology so the first one is raw materials so this is the raw materials that i've utilized uh, to synthesize the catalyst which are the ions water nickel to nitrate hexahydrate calcium nitrate tetrahydrate and also aluminium oxide so this is the flow chart uh, for the preparation of the catalyst so initially we are going to weight alumina and loaded drop wise into the uh, calcium aqueous solution and followed by nickel aqueous solution and the resulting uh, mixture the resulting solution uh, is magnetically stirred and the slurry mixture was oven dried for 12 hours at 100 degrees celsius and after that the dried um, the dried powder was consigned in a furnace at 500 degrees celsius for six hours and we cool down after the calcination we cool down the powder and the cooled catalyst were crushed and sieved to obtain final particle range of 45 until 125 micrometer and the synthesis catalyst was kept in a vial at room temperature condition so next is the list of catalysts so this is the catalyst that i've synthesized for my project so the first one is cao 28 percent and the next one is co 4 percent with different weight percent of co which is 2 percent and 4 percent so this is the picture of the catalyst that i have synthesized and for the characterization, the first one is S-ray diffraction SRD, and the equipment is Rigaku Mini Flex 2, and the S-ray source is copper K alpha radiation, wavelength 1.54, uh, range of diffraction to theta 3 to 80 degree, voltage and current 30 kV and 15 mA, and the scan rate is 1 degree per minute. And the second one is BET, and the instrument that we have utilized is Micromagnetic ASAP 2010. And the analysis uh, for BET is nitrogen absorption desorption and the temperature is acquired at 77 Kelvin. And the last one is catalytic testing where we have employed bioreforming of methane to examine our catalyst in a tubular flow reactor. So the mass catalyst that I've placed into the reactor is 0.1 gram with the reduction temperature uh, starts at 298 Kelvin to 1073 Kelvin for one hour. And the bioreforming of methane temperature is 1073 Kelvin for 8 hours. So this is the picture of the tubular flow reactor that I've utilized for the bioreforming of methane. So next, I'll proceed with the results and discussion for this project. So the first characterization is X-ray diffraction XRD. So this XRD is to analyze the crystallite size and chemical composition of the catalyst. So this is the uh, XRD pattern that we have obtained from the ethical lab and from here we can analyze the peak of 2 theta at 46 degree indicates the crystallinity peak of ni which is this one this and this one for 40 percent uh, and 28 percent of catalyst and two sharp crystallinity peak of ca at 2 theta 57 and 68 degree which is this one and this one uh, for 28 percent and this one and this one for 40 percent of uh, cao and it is enhanced proportionally to the loading of CA. As you can see here, the uh, peak of CA uh, for 28% is 93.6 and for 48% is 1058.7. Same goes to the other crystallinity peak of CA here. And for the nickel peak also enhanced uh, with uh, higher loading of CA which is for the 28% is 901.7 and for percent is 929.7 and the peak of AL that is located to 2 theta 39 degree which is the small one here decreases concurrently so for 28% it is uh, higher which is 701.5 and for 4% is 678.8 so from here we can conclude that uh, and it is also proven that there are some interaction happening between the compositions in both catalysts so the next one is BET. So basically BET analysis is uh, used to determine the surface area and also porous symmetry of the catalyst. So this is the BET pattern that we obtained from the lab. And from here we can analyze uh, the similar nitrogen absorption desorption isotherm pattern where it is associated to type 4 isotherms including hysteresis loop which is this one is the hysteresis loop of H1 shape for all the catalysts. And we can see a similar hysteresis law for both CaO 2% also 48%. And significant indication for mesoporous material means the mesoporous channel of the catalyst were in synergical shape. And the higher Ca loading uh, results to a greater surface area and poor volume of the catalyst. Uh, so from uh, we can refer in the table here, 
for the surface area, the CO2 at percent is around 115.4 meter cube per gram and um, for 4 weight percent, 116.2 which is slightly higher compared to 2 weight percent and for the 4 volume, the same thing happened which is the 4 weight percent is higher which is 0 0.26 compared to 2 weight percent which is 0 0.25 so we can conclude that the higher the loading of CA the greater the surface area and also the pore volume of the catalyst. So proceed to the next one which is our main objectives for this project which is bioreforming of methane for our catalytic testing. So this is the figure of the bioreforming of methane uh, in terms of percent conversion against time for 2.8% CAO catalyst and this one is for 4.8% CAO catalyst. So basically this uh, catalytic testing is to test a short time stability of catalyst for 6 hours at 600 degrees Celsius in a tubular flow reactor. So based on these two, figure, uh, these two figures, uh, we can conclude that both catalysts showed good stability where the conversion of methane and carbon dioxide is around 50 to 80% uh, for both catalysts. And for the CAO 4% catalyst, the highest conversion of methane is 87% which is here and for the CO2 is 71% which is here at the 4 hours and for the 2% CO catalyst, the high conversion of methane is 82% which is at the 3rd hours and the CO2 conversion at the highest at 64% which is at the 4th hours so from here we can conclude that um, the conversion of CAO 4% is higher compared to CAO 2% which making the loading of uh, CA is significant in the catalyst to make the conversion become higher compared to uh, lower uh, loading of CA and also from here we can conclude that the conversion of the uh, bioreforming of methane um, and also carbon dioxide is better compared to other catalysts so next is bioreforming of methane in terms of yield. So from the graph here, this is the graph of percent yield versus time for CAO 2% catalyst and this one is the same graph for CAO 4% catalyst. And this is to evaluate the produced yield of hydrogen and carbon monoxide after reaction. And as you can see, in both two and both figures, you can see the first hour, there's no yield at all. It is because even though there is conversion, as you can see in the previous uh, slides, there is conversion in the first hour um, probably the yield is still not there and it cannot be detected by the GC and for the CAO 4% catalyst the highest yield of H2 is 46% uh, here and CO is 25.8% which is at the, end, uh, at the end of the reaction which is at the 6 hours and for the CAO 2% catalyst the highest yield of H2 is 40% at the 5th hour here and the CO is 20.5% which is at the 4th hour so the yield produced is not equal to conversion as I mentioned just now which may due to the poisoning of the catalyst making the reactant binds irreversibly to the active side of the catalyst and from this yield also we can conclude that the syngas ratio for both catalysts uh, we have achieved um, our expected syngas ratio of 2 to 1 which making it um, successful and better compared to other catalysts. So as for conclusion, the nickel based catalyst incorporated with various weight loading of CA and alumina were successfully synthesized via wetness impregnation technique. So from the characterization analysis which is SRD and also BET, uh, CAO 4% catalyst demonstrates better properties compared to CAO 2% catalyst such as the pore volume and also surface area uh, due to higher loading of CA and based on bioreforming of methane reaction, the desired syngas ratio of 2 to 1 was achieved from the production of hydrogen to carbon monoxide uh, as I've mentioned, as I've explained in the result discussion just now and a higher catalytic activity can be observed which making the catalyst able to maintain catalytic performance for a longer period of time and this catalyst can be potentially utilized in many commercial applications due to its various advantages so next is recommendation. So for this project, um, maybe other material or metal can be used while utilizing the same experimental procedure which is wetness impregnation method and different method of synthesis also should be employed which might improve the surface dispersion of the catalyst. Um, the third one is proper procedure to operate the reactor 
for the capability testing should be taught to all reactor students such as FYP students and also postgraduates so it will ease them to operate the reactor by themselves and the last but not least is additional characterization can be conducted to reveal more properties such as physical, chemical and morphological of the synthesized catalyst such as TEM, ATR, FTIR, TGA, FESEM, DSC and H2 TPR. So for the project timelines of this project, so this is the gun chart uh, which indicates the timeline since the beginning until the end of the semester. So from week 1 until week 12 which is the previous week, we have I've done a research study, synthesis of catalyst, characterization of catalyst, catalyst testing, analysis and reporting, progress assessment and also submission of draft dissertation. So the next one uh, will be in week 13 which is the submission of dissertation. Uh, softbound and currently we are here so uh, we are, we are proceed we are going to proceed with another two which is this is presentation and submission of dissertation hardbound to complete the final project two and the red dot here indicates the key milestone of the project so this is the list of references that I have mainly used for my final year project with that, I end my presentation with thank you and have a nice day.